we take a look at the Suzuki track map, David, we'll see that there are a lot of changes in this track. That's for sure, Art. About the only thing that stays the same is the starting line in the first corner. But as soon as you drop into the pit, everything is different. A right-hander this year approaching that big elevator jump. Not a very good run at it either. And also that whoop section down there at the bottom of your screen, bringing the racing closer to the fans. For more on the track conditions, let's go down to Davey Coombs. Gatorback Cycle Park here at Gainesville has always been known as one of the hardest tracks on the circuit. And a week full of rain made it a really bad track for the amateurs on Friday and on Saturday. But as you can see from the soil here, the organizers came out, they worked the track all night on Saturday night, and what we have is a really loamy track, so traction's at a premium, it's not as rough as it normally is, and we're getting some really good racing out here. Thanks, Davey, and a big congratulations to Mark Barnett as we get ready for the 125 first moto. It was Barnett that got this track in such terrific shape. He won this 125 overall back in 1983. Now he's working the track for these youngsters as we get ready, and they're off. Defending champion, number one, Steve Lampson, very fine out of the gate. Lampson gets the whole shot. And right with him, number nine, Mike Brown of Honda of Troy and his teammate Jeff Willow, Mikhail Pichon, David Huffman, and John Dowd. Very good starts, but it's number one, the defending champion out front. You know, I noticed, Art, as they came off the starting line that Damon Huffman was way in the back of the pack. He went to the first corner, looked like last, but he was pretty clever around the first corner because he's running about fifth or sixth right now. Brown into the title chase until the very end of last season. And he makes the inside move on Steve Lampson. What a nice move. He had the right line, took advantage of Lampson going a little wide. Well, it looked like Lampson charged hard into the corner. He felt the pressure. He hit a braking bump, and he wasn't able to keep the wheels on the ground and get his brakes to actually work and get him stopped in the corner. He drifted too wide, and Brown was there. Record crowds in Supercross this year, and this is the opener for motocross, of course. Good to see a record crowd here at Gainesville. Jeff Nutter, Mike Brown's mechanic, giving him some encouragement now. He'll go to the other side of the pits to give him the board. Right, they come up out of that pit, and that's the first time they get a close look at their rider, and then they run across where they come back down this way. This is the signaling area, and Mike Brown hanging on to that lead, but Lampson is starting to put the pressure on because he's feeling it from Pichon. Lammy from Pollock Pines, California. On the inside, number one, putting the challenge now to Mike Brown into the whoop section. After that big swerve, it is Lampson back in first place. Look out for Pichon in third. Well, Mike Brown had to move over to the inside to that whoop section. He'd been coming in wide, but uh, he's got to protect it. Now you see Pichon again coming up the inside. He forces Brown into a little mistake, and it paid off. Now, this is another section that's been drastically changed this year. It used to be a sharp right-hander before the, uh, they went back up the hill, but now they go all the way up this hill, and they get a good run up the... Uh, up the uphill jump to the finish line, and Pichon is really closed on Lampson, putting a lot of pressure on. It looks like these two may pull away from Brown. Lampson even looking back to see where Mikel was. And Pichon has got a little different line everywhere. Just like Chad said, he's not following, and uh, that's how you put the pressure on. You show him a fender. Pichon to the inside. And Pichon looks back once again at Steve Lampson. Lampson, though, holding tight after losing the lead. Brown may have a little advantage uh, in horsepower and suspension, but Sheik is... Uh, doesn't really care right now. He's going as fast as he can, and it's, it's working for him. Cheek to the inside on the Brown. You saw the green bike go right by. That's Damon Huffman. He's in third. Now Sheik, Scott Sheik, the Camel Skull top privateer winner of last year, is in fourth position. Mike Brown in fifth. Number 19, James Dobb. He's riding Craig Decker's bike. Decker, of course, out with an injury, so it is a race-to-race -race situation with Team Suzuki for James Dobb, but Dobb is doing a nice job sneaking that fender just inside Brown. Brown powering out of the corner, though, to keep the lead on his competition. The veteran John Dowd, number seven, earlier in the race, he ran into a downed rider and went down, and that slowed him up a bit. He's trying to battle his way back into it. His bike's not, well, I was going to say, it didn't sound very good when it went by the booth. Well, that's obvious now. Something's obvious. That's mechanical right there. You can see him trying to work the throttle. Uh, delicately, delicately to just try to keep it from loading up. I don't, I don't know. Well, like I said, he didn't get off the starting gate very good, but he got through the corner uh, around the inside and moved up quite a ways. You can see him looking over on the racetrack there to see who's next in line for him to pass. Looked like a pretty long ways. Oh, look at Steve Lampson. Lampson went down. And now we've got a real battle for second place on our hands. Steve Lampson, Damon Huffman, and there's Scott Sheik all battling for second. Wow, this has really changed the complexion of this because I think I was about to say that it was a long ways to the next uh, rider, which was second place uh, Lampson. 
And as Huffman looked over, and he may have looked over and seen that he was in the corner and crashed, and now he's got a great opportunity to finish second, perhaps pick up an overall. Scott Sheik is running a tough race. Cuts to the inside, boxes him out, and Scott Sheik is now in third place. He's on a podium spot if he can hold Huffman off. Mikel Pichon, only a few feet away, sees the checkers and celebrates his second moto win. As far as the national outdoors are concerned, Pichon laps in second. Scott Sheik, a great third place finish with Huffman in fourth. Okay, the gate is down. Let's see who gets the hole shot. Lampson, another good start. Mike Brown is up there. Lampson again, the hole shot with Ezra Lusk and uh, Brown, Deegan Ferry, and Sheik the order. Denny Stevenson on the left. He's down. Ezra Lusk, though, shows Lampson a wheel as they come down. Look at all those ruts. Well, that's going to get worse as the day continues because of all that rain. The ground is pretty soft, and uh, it makes it tough to choose your lines in the, the opening laps of the next moto because uh, the track has changed a little bit, and, and that's what's good about motocross. It changes from lap to lap. Lust really putting the pressure on Lamps, and he's showing him a wheel everywhere. And, you know, when you, when you ride that aggressive and you're searching for lines and gobbling up all that roost coming off the guy in front of you, it takes a lot of energy. So I'd be interested to see if Lust can hang on at, with this pace for the rest of the race. And here's Mikel Pichon, number 12, was the winner of moto number one. Trying to weed his way up now through the pack. And he's all the way back in 18th place. We do have word now that he went down right after that first lap. This area comes into, though, is a little bit more tricky. And, oh, he almost does a dirt bike phase there. Oh, well, he just didn't let off the gas. He started to get sideways on that hard, slick stuff. And he, he just left the throttle on, made problems worse, almost went off the racetrack. And uh, Brown really didn't have to make a pass. He just rode in the straightaway, minding his own business, and inherited second place. We've got a battle going on, and it's Ferry to the inside, getting by Lusk. Lusk almost went down again. What a great battle between these guys, and Ferry really on the move. Ferry cutting to the inside, and he's got the edge. Can he hold on to it? Oh, he just got the traction coming up the elevator. Well, that's the same place he made the move on Lusk. Uh, he's got that right-hander wire. As we're going wide, Huffman going up the middle, and Huffman takes advantage of it. He's got more pressure now on Deegan. Deegan, number 25. Damon Huffman with a very shrewd move, and he gets by. Nice move by Damon as he's gunning now for the fourth-place rider, moving into fifth. As we've seen Steve Lampson pull out to a lead. He's gaining about a second per lap out in front. But look at John Dowd in battling with Damon Huffman. Huffman cutting to the inside. Oh, hooking the front wheel was John Dowd. Dowd in a battle for fifth place after Reed Carburetor problems in the first moto. Oh, Tim Ferry has gone down. So Ferry's got a forgettable moto to think about after this one. Well, he had a forgettable moto in the first one, too, and it, you know, he was running third. Lamson takes a checkered flag with it easily, but what a disappointment for Ferry. He's running up there until the very end. Take a look at our Suzuki results. Lamson, Brown, and Sheik on the podium. Ferry slipping to sixth. From just outside Sacramento, California, it's round two of the AMA National Motocross Series. Well, it looks like somebody went crazy with the silly string, Art. It's going to be difficult to memorize this racetrack. This place has always been uh, its been notorious for changing. Uh, up until a couple of years ago, it ran different directions each year. But this year, it's uh, basically the same as last, although they've brought in quite a bit of sand. That's going to make it nice for the spectators to keep the dust down. However, some of the riders are complaining that it's one line. Lammy number one, Steve Lampson, Pichon number 12, right next to each other. Number 17 is Michael Craig as the 40 strong head to the first turn. Anthony has a good start, as well as Lammy. And Pedro Gonzalez getting hung up right there along with Corey Keeney and Jeff Willow. The whole shot to Steve Lampson. Holland and Antonez, and here comes Pichon. Pichon to the inside, moving into second place. That's number 12, Mikel Pichon. Here's Brian Deegan, number 25. Dowd is on the move. He had an eighth place start, and he is really pouring it on. I think this track really suits him. You can see it's kind of rough, and a lot of different lines, uh, a lot of different uh, choppy berms right there. They start to get rough in them, and you got to be pretty smart. There's sand, as we've already mentioned here and there. We know that Dowd goes fast in the sand. This is the first place he ever won a national, so he's probably comfortable here. Out of the horseshoe, here comes John Dowd, and it looks like he's got the momentum. Can he take uh, Antonis to the inside? Yes. Oh, he's got great speed going downhill. Well, there's some of the other guys we've seen getting burned out a little bit early, but Dowd right here looks strong. 
Good speed downhill, takes the run beautifully, and he's in a bar-to-bar -bar battle with Rusty Holland, number 71. Holland on David Pinkery's bike. Got a good opportunity with Pro Circuit. Pinkery injured. Dowdy comes back to the inside to reestablish third place. That's the section, that same downhill where Dow got Anson as a little earlier. He's been fast through there. These guys are in a good battle behind him. I don't think he cares anymore the way he caught and passed him. Uh, he should be able to hang on to that spot now. Casey Johnson, number 58, in fifth spot with Deegan in sixth. And Pedersen in seventh right now. 125, moto number one. Johnson trying to get around James Dobb. Dobb trying to make an impression to try to get a factory ride back, and Casey Johnson gets him on the inside. Lampson on his way and takes his second photo win of the season. It's Lampson, Mikel Pichon, John Dowd, a lonely third place. So the 32nd board is down now, and we could go at any time. Lampson getting the whole shot so far. And look at the wheelie he does. But Lampson cutting to the inside gets another whole shot. Pichon is there. And added to the mix is Tim Ferry, number 20. Pichon, number 12, taking the lead. And right now, I've noticed that they've watered the track uh, in places. You can see right there, they've watered it, trying to keep the dust down. Ferry in a drag race with Pichon, trying to take over the lead. Can't make the inside, though, so Pichon's going to hang on to it. But when they water the track like that, it makes it very slick right here. All that mud flies up, gets in your face, and you go through two, three tear-offs at the very beginning of the race. So preserving your vision uh, in those first few laps is important. And right now, Lamps is gobbling up a lot of that roost. There you see Dowd in fourth. He's pulling up. And Dowd, a strong runner coming from behind. Lampson and Ferry, now. a little bobble there on the corner. Yeah, Lamps is starting to apply the heat. And uh, that's, that's when we'll find out what Ferry's made of. Right oh. there, Ferry with a different line. I don't think it's going to work. Lampson easily blitzing by Tim Ferry. Kind of looked like Ferry just led him by. And it's not a bad thing early in a race. It's a 30 minute moto. It's plenty of time. Ferry can learn a little bit from Lampson and stay in this battle and perhaps put it on him in the end. John Dowd making a move on Tim Ferry. Ferry going backwards so far as Dowd moves into third place. Now Dowd is starting to stay in contact with the leader, so this could become a three-way battle. Uh, if Pichon holds up Lampson a little bit at all, that's going to allow Dowd to get right in there and really change this. Here goes Lamby on the uphill. Oh, he cuts to the inside. A good, clean move by Lampson. Well, uh, you know what happened was the last lap, uh, I thought Pichon would have recognized that Lampson caught him through there so much. I mean, he made up probably 10 bike links, and he still left the doors a little bit too far open, and Lampson rode right through it. The stronger that you are, the, you know, you can really ride that thing aggressive, and Dowd is strong, and he's got a strong finish, and uh, already you can see how much he's putting up on, closed up on Pichon, and it, I can't believe how tight these guys all are. Here goes Dowd onto the inside, and Pichon now is pushed back to third. John Dowd, can he hold on a second now? He gets the challenge from Pichon, but gets good power on the wide swing. Oh, Mikel Pichon goes down. That'll give Kevin Windham a big break. Mikel Pichon dropping from third place now, as Windham, you see number 38, right behind him, picks the right line. Lampson holding up under the pressure in the first moto from Mikel Pichon for nine laps, and then one in a breeze. This time he's being challenged big time by John Dowd. Coming around on the backside of the track. Not too much more territory to cover. John Dowd, bar to bar now. Oh, the crowd is going crazy. It's a record crowd here in Sacramento. Lampson, though, regains his advantage. Dowd tried a little something different going into that corner, lost the front end just for a second, lost just a little bit of time. Lampson coming out, getting his feet off the peg, but doesn't lose much time. He keeps the throttle on. Well, Dowd gave it a mighty battle as he almost spun out in back of Lammy. Lamps in the checkers. He gets his sweep and now has won three of the four motos this year. Lampson, Dowd, Wyndham, Pichon, and Ferry, the top five on our Suzuki Field Summary. And two national wins in a row. Well, great way to start your title defense, huh? Yeah, it's great. A lot better than last year. So uh, I'm going to just put my head down and uh, work hard. I mean, my bike were great today on Cliff White, Mike Gosser, and uh, Bill's Pipes. One of the guys did a really great job on it.
Motocross returns to Southern California with round three of the AMA National Series. One of the biggest changes is the starting line, a cement starting grid the riders will have to negotiate before they get out onto a completely new designed racetrack, a lot of elevation over to the top left of your screen that climbs four stories. What goes up must come down. Getting ready for moto number one, Dobb on the left of your screen, Robbie Raynard back in the action, Casey Johnson 58, there's Dowd, Pedro Gonzalez, Pichon, Lampson the defending champion, and Brian Deegan number 25, and the gate is dropped, Lampson with a good start, but look at Robbie Raynard, number 14, who's back in the game after a broken neck in the Supercross season, Raynard has the lead, Windham in good position in third. Now some of these younger guys get good starts off the cement. Remember Ponca City, this is where a lot of the amateurs come up. Uh, Kevin Windham as well had a lot of experience on there, but it sure paid off for Raynard. You can see they put some water on the racetrack. Guys starting to splash through those puddles. And I noticed as we went down the starting line, John Dowd had roll-offs. Uh, I think he anticipated getting sprayed a little bit. Raynard's clean. Everyone else is getting dirty. There's the rider going down in that slick stuff. Steve Lampson. Oh, the defending champion who's won three of the four motos so far this year is going to be way behind. Look at all the riders passing him. Windham to the inside. Looked like a dirt track race right there, but Robbie Raynard holding on. Well, Raynard had the better line on the outside. He's able to use that cushion, and uh, with Windham cutting up the inside, he's lucky to keep it on two wheels. That a square in that corner like that, that really becomes an off camber. It's a lot harder packed in there, so very slick. As Robbie Raynard feels the heat now of Kevin Windham. And you mentioned the crowd. What a great crowd. It was a massive traffic jam before this race got underway. They're getting their money's worth right now. Windham is all over Raynard. Kevin Windham, super in those whoops. He's got the edge on Raynard. Comes over the hill. Can Robbie make it back? He cut to the inside and the outside, and Raynard now in second place. But Craig is starting to put the pressure now on the young Mikel Fashon out of Le Mans, France. Fashon winning the first moto of the year at Gatorback and then slipped to 12th place in the second. Here's Michael Craig making the pass over the jump. Craig came out of that corner, had a good run into that whoop section, and just went right by Pichon like he was standing still. So uh, he's perhaps learned enough from Pichon. Now he knows how to hold him off, and I think these guys are gaining on the leaders right now. Steve Lapson's mechanic looking rather concerned right now. His man went down to the first lap, and right here he's getting passed. It's Rusty Holland, number 71, passing Steve Lampson. Lampson having his problems in 14th, but he's looking down to the back tire. It's a flat tire, probably. Yeah, it looks like it. He's losing time right now. He already had enough problems, having to come from about 25th in that first lap crash, so he'll be way off the pace now. Here's Michael Craig in second place. Oh, Craig goes off the track, hits the hay bale, came down wrong and cased it. There's another look. It looks like he's squared that firm. He just got way off line. You can see he's aiming right for the hay bale. Nothing he could do about it. He goes flying into the crowd. The double Ds, Dobb and Dowd right in front of Ezra Lusk as Scott Sheik is out front. Whoa, he's off the track. He's still up on the bike, but he had to go off the track in that section. Here's Robbie Raynard. Raynard's getting some pressure now from Casey Johnson as we take another look. Well, he saw Sheik with the back end is swapped way out to the left, aimed him right off the track. He did stay on the bike, but he's going to have to circle back around and go over that jump again. He'll lose touch with that battle. Lusk coming to the inside of him. Robbie's doing a good job to hang on to it. You can't even tell he's got a flat, really. Fooled us. Yeah. I was looking for it. I saw him sliding around. I was looking at the rear tire, and it just didn't look flat. But uh, his dad has confirmed it for us. That's that's impressive. I mean, he can ride like that, not lose much time. Uh, and have guys... a fast rider like Ezra Lusk having trouble really laboring to get by him. Yeah. Ezra Lusk goes to the outside. John Dowd is right behind Ezra. And look for the two, really, to pass on this lap as Ezra's already gotten the inside move on Robbie Raynard, and Raynard right there is just not going to get the traction. Mikhail Pichon comes in. He's got a flat tire, and they are going to lose a lot of track position. It is the rear, and it's going to have to come off and get changed. Pichon looks to be okay. He's you know, asking for more water. Ezra Lusk trying to catch back up to John Dowd. Dowd, though, with a good, strong line. Look out! He's out of order. Ezra Lusk goes spinning in the air. Can't really tell what happened. Looks like he just got sideways and hit a bad little kicker on that jump. 
Well, it looked like it wrenched his neck. I hope he's okay. As for Les from Bainbridge, Georgia, and John Dowd now clearly in the third. So we have well-defined positions until Dowd might be able to catch up to Casey Johnson. What a shot in the arm for the entire Yamaha crew. All the mechanics, the front office people, the checkered flag for Kevin Windham, his very first national outdoor victory. Windham, Dowd, Casey Johnson, Tim Ferry after a bad start goes all the way up to fourth. Okay, we're getting set for the start of moto number two for the 125s in Southern California. The gate to drop at any moment now. And uh, oh, look at number 73. He got a good jump. Lampson is right there, though. But the guy out in front heading for the corner is Windham gets the whole shot. Chad Pedersen in good position. There goes Pedro Gonzalez flying through the air. Also, Barry, number 12, was shown getting hung up in that crash. So Steve Lampson who had his problems in moto number one, is trying to make up for it now here early in moto number two. Lance is definitely fast. He, he may be the fastest guy on the track right now. He knows that the sooner he can get around Patterson, the better he can probably get up and catch Windham, make a good race out of it. Our leader, Kevin Windham, followed by these two young men, Chad Pedersen, number 21, and Steve Lampson. I'm impressed with Pedersen, who hasn't been on the bike that much this year. He's looking back. That doesn't give me a good sign that he's going to hold on to second place as Lampson trying to cut to the inside and does so with, with such ease. Down to the inside on Pedersen. John Dowd. Yes, he moves into third. Dowd's got the strength and the time so far in this photo to catch up with Lampson. That'd be an interesting battle. Oh, my goodness. Kevin Windham with Steve Lampson right on his tail. It's important that Kevin stay upright and smart. Right. He's got to make good decisions right here. And even if he was to let Lampson by, or not let him by, but get past, uh, he'd still win the overall as long as he can hold off John Dowd. So that may be on his mind, but... Right now, it looks like he's given Lampson all he can handle. This is going to be a great battle. And that would be his first national outdoor overall in his career. That would put another smile on his face, I'm sure. Lampson really gassing it inside now. Great turn by Steve Lampson. We've got a new leader. Lampson, though, having trouble there in the whoops. Here comes Wyndham back again. Oh, great move by Wyndham. He kept the speed through there, and uh, Lampson actually made a little bobble. That's the section where Lusk went down. That's a real tricky section coming through there. A lot of rocks, and it's kind of like a big whoop de doo section all the way down through there. And Lampson started swapping and had to back off a little, and that gave Wyndham the edge he needed. And here comes Lampson again, right back at Wyndham. Look at these guys all bunched up coming into the corner. Lusk with the fastest line. Lusk to the inside. This is a popular place to pass right here on the uphill grind. Lusk challenging Casey Johnson. Goes wide. Good throttle. Ezra Lusk moving into sixth place. For Steve Lampson, a turn away. The checkers. Steve Lapson is fourth moto win in six tries. On a misty day in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, the hillsides are jammed with fans and riders ready for round four of the 1996 AMA Motocross Championship. In the Suzuki points, the official tally has Lamson comfortably up on John Dowd and 125 East Supercross champion Mikel Pichon, but Kevin Windham leaps into the top five. Ready for the start of the first of two motos. The gate is down. We're away. We'll be watching right there. Lampson on number one. Dowd, second points coming in. Almost goes down. He's shown right there as well. But the privateers are right up front. Craig had an excellent jump out of the gate as well as Lampson. But Craig's line to the first corner was a little bit better. Had the inside. He's got the edge right now. Lampson's falling back. Rain continues to fall here at High Point Raceway. Wyndham, the hottest rider in the series, missed the opening round of the Outdoor Championship in Gainesville, Florida with a broken arm. But he says Steve Lampson came from behind to win the championship last year, and I think I can do it this year, too. Well, the, the speed he's got, there's no question he can do it. It's, he's going to need a little bit of luck, though, to make up that many points. He's going to have to hope Lampson has some bad races. And look at Sheik. There is Dowd. Lampson is just behind. There he is, coming from the left of your screen with a number one plate. Hopping over the bumps, had a shot at him in that corner. Sometimes you just want to get in there and show him your wheel, let him know you're there. Plunging downhill, Lampson taking a run against Dowd again and gets by him this time. 
Pretty aggressive move. He charged down the hill. It's hard to believe he could get stopped for that inside berm. He shoved down wide. That's the same section where Lampson went down last year on that downhill. He took a trip over the bars, and that was it for him. And here comes Pichon. Well, Dowd and Pichon both jumped over that double jumps. He saw as they entered up into that right-hand corner before they head back down to the woods. Making up a lot of time. Looks like Pichon's got an inside line, too. On the backside, Pichon looks for fifth place. And it looks like he has it on the bright green Kawasaki. Out front, it is Sheik and Craig. And then this battle. The defending champ, Steve Lamson. Kevin Windham. Now Windham comes under fire from Pichon, who has taken Dowd and Windham in the same section of racetrack. Well, Windham with a better line around that, over that tunnel. You can see Pichon's not willing to give it up. He jumps over one of those big step downs, I guess you could call it, coming down that hill and gets them back. But you can see how much they gotta, they gotta be so delicate around the corner. It's so off camera, it's very difficult to see on camera. Going down this hill too, very steep. Really tough to stay in that inside berm at the bottom. Lampson, then Pichon, and Dowd looking very racy right now. He's charged all the way up to the rear wheel of the Frenchman, looking for fourth place. Now watch Pichon right here. This is where he's been having trouble. See this double, he doesn't do it. That's the third lap in a row. He hasn't jumped it, and he gets passed again by Dowd. Lance is not that easy to pass. He's got the number one plate to prove it. But uh, still, I don't think he's riding like he usually rides. And I don't know if that front tire is making any difference or not, but I don't know. These guys are so amongst themselves. They're really having a tough time trying to make up time on the leaders. Pichon on a downhill goes around the outside of Lampson and takes over third place. Scott Sheik looking for victory in Moto 1 here at Mount Morris, and he has it. A salute to the crowd. You can bet Scott Sheik is one happy man. What an accomplishment. There is Kenny Watson. Careful, Kenny, you're going to hurt your man. He's got another moto still to come. Thirty-second board is up and down. Ready for the gate. Revs come up. The crowd is on its feet and screaming. And we are away. Good start again for Steve Lampson. Looks like Lampson was able to hang on to that lead, and he does. Barry and Casey Johnson right in there this time. Tire field bounding downhill, then a hard right-hander, and a long series of S-turns with this jump over the infield tunnel. Barry squared off the corner, gets around Lampson into the lead quick. Another good start for Scott Sheik. He's on the right of the screen. Moves into third place, so Barry going for the jugular in the first lap. Takes over the lead. Wyndham with a kind of a frustrating first moto, getting passed right at the end by Pichon, finished fourth. You think that uh, with a fourth place, he may not have a shot at the overall, but after winning the last round, trying to make up some points on Lampson. Lampson going down right there before the uphill. The race leader is down and slow to get up. Looks like the bike is stalled. Steve Lampson's going to lose a lot of positions on the racetrack. And Tim Ferry is suddenly catapulted into the race lead with Kevin Windham right there behind. Looking for inside position in this corner, and he takes it. There's Ezra Lusk. Behind him, Steve Lampson, the reigning national champion, who led this second moto before falling. Now he's trying to catch Lusk for third place, approaching the triple jump that he's been taking, flying through the air. Oh, he came down hard that time. You see him shaking his left wrist. Now steeply downhill, Dow dives for the inside line and has it. Oh, they come together and down goes Lusk. Flying with a heel clicker for the fans. Kevin Windham picks up his second straight overall and a big step up in the national standings. Here's a look at our Suzuki leaderboard after Moto2. Kevin Windham takes the victory after a fourth in Moto1. Welcome to Bud's Creek, Maryland, on a hot and humid day for racing on one of the nation's great traditional motocross tracks. We take a look at the Suzuki track map. That famous uphill start hasn't changed, but... The rest of the track is completely different. It runs the opposite direction. There's not as much air time, but there's still a lot of elevation changes. 
That motocross is such an enduring sport. 30 minutes plus two laps on each moto. Steve Lampson after the gate drop gets a good start. Oh, going down is Kevin Wyndham, number 38. What a bad break for Wyndham right off the start. He'll be in last place, baby. 58 is Casey Johnson of Pro Circuit. Lampson out in front after the hole shot. Art, it looked to me like he was riding at 250 up that hill. He had an incredible jump out of the gate. And Kevin Wyndham has been chipping away at his points lead the past two uh, races, winning both those overalls. Now uh, he's got a clear track. He doesn't have to worry about Wyndham in this moto, I don't think. Lampson out in front. Here comes Pachon through the ruts. Can Antonez come back? Antonez in third. Now the look at it, Pichon just coming down the inside, going through that deep rut there, hard under braking. Just takes the line away. Antonez tried to square it back underneath him, but there's no, not enough horsepower through that soft stuff on a 125. Here's Lampson. Oh, he gets hung up on the tire. Oh, what a close race now with Mikel Pichon right on his back tire. We've got a race on our hands for first place. I think the crowd knows it. You can see they're getting into it. And anytime uh, you got a guy in front of you starting to make mistakes, it gives uh, this would give Pichon, in this case, a lot of confidence. Right there, he had to follow him through that rut. That's pretty difficult. Mikel Pichon now looking for the opportunity to get around and take the lead in this first moto. Now we're coming into the sections on the racetrack where Chad felt his rider was faster than Steve. We'll find out in a minute. If he can get around, it does seem like Pichon's a little quicker at this point in the race. It'll be interesting to see how they handle the ruts now as Pichon, it is side by side as they come up the hill. Lampson riding all the way on the edge of the track. Pichon didn't leave him much room there. Oh, he pitches inside, they bang bars. Lammy will retake the lead. Right now, though, Sheik's starting to look around at John Dowd. Dowdy cuts in front, gets the good line in the rut, and John Dowd moving into fourth place. It's the same place Michonne took over the lead a little earlier from Lampson. Charges down the inside through that soft stuff, gets into the inside burn. Nice pass. The defending champion, number one, Steve Lampson, has a comfortable lead as he approaches the final finish line jump. A little off balance right there in that berm. It doesn't matter now. He's got a good lead, checkered flag. That feels good. You know, I, I think he saved a little bit of energy in that moto, and he looks pretty fresh, and he knows he's just put more pad on his points lead. The 30-second board is up for our second moto now. These riders having to reach back as the gate drops. And Lampson once again with a very good start. And Antonez another good start along with Mike Brown, Dowd, and Pichon. Pichon number 12. The pack slowed down by that tight turn as they go the opposite direction as they went last year. Steve Lampson once again with the advantage. What a powerful day he's having. 21 is Chad Pedersen. 7 is Dowd. 17 is Craig. And having his problems going down, Mikel Pichon. That'll hurt his overall chances as taking second place in that first moto, I'm sure he was hoping to win this one. Down to it, a little wheelie through that corner, <laughs> trying to get around quicker as uh, Ferry now cuts to the inside, can't make the move. Well, he went in there and tried. Dowd is a strong boy. He's not going to get out of the way very easy, and Ferry almost lost another position because he had to tuck around that inside. There you see Sheik. Sheik dives in front of Ferry as Ferry comes back on the outside. A battle with Team Suzuki versus a privateer Suzuki behind John Dowd, the Team Yamaha. So it's Dowd, Ferry, and Sheik. Oh, Mikel Pichon has got down just after the finish line jump. Boy, from the way the bike looks, it looks like he went flying. Either that or he uh, walked off the side of the racetrack. Just, he looks like he's holding his arm. Steve Lampson, our leader, as uh, Marty is uh, continuing to check on Mikel Pichon's condition right now. He gets the pit board out in first position. Mike Brown still putting up a good battle, not letting him get away. Mike Brown's actually caught Lampson. He's faster right now which is just amazing the guy went out of the first moto with a painful wrist and uh what a gutsy performance from him it's tim ferry number 20 trying to hold off kevin windham 
went in with a little different line through there. That's one of the places on the racetrack where they watered it and uh, it really hasn't gotten packed in. So the guys either got to go way wide or way tight. Side by side, Wyndham goes to the outside. Can he come out of this corner with momentum? He cuts up the inside. Great move by Kevin Wyndham. He makes sure to make it stick by cutting all the way across the track in front of Ferry. And Antonez, with his best national performance overall as far as consistency, he took a second place at Hangtown in 91, but the weather allowed only one moto. And coming in real fast to the corner, Dowd trying to make a move, and he slips out, spins out John Dowd. Dowd's the one that's going to have to find a way around, and he's making a lot of mistakes. So anytime you're making those kinds of mistakes, you start wearing yourself out. And uh, of the two guys right now, I'd have to say, oh! Oh, and Antonez, he spins out. Turnabout's fair play, I guess. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> of the two, I thought perhaps because Antonez is riding a little better, making less mistakes, he'd be the fresher of the two. But uh, big mistake there. Ferry now giving Antonez a challenge. And Scott Sheik is coming to the picture now, number 26. It's Sheik and Ferry right behind Antonez. Sheik passing Ferry on the downhill. And by the way, Brown has had to pull off the track out of second place. And you can see there that Tim Ferry has really slowed up. Uh, I'm being inclined to think that he did something wrong somewhere, came up really short on the jump. Here comes Mike Craig, and it seems inevitable he's going to get around. But Oh, Scott Sheik in the same area that Mikel Pichon went flying. He's on that side hill after the finish line jump. Out in front, Steve Lampson continues just to motor away. He's had such a flawless ride. We haven't checked him out lately. But as the race winds down to the end, this man is looking forward to a sweep here at Bud's Creek. There is no challenge at all for Steve Lampson as he comes around. Points down to the tire. Did you see that? Not sure what he was pointing to, but he doesn't have far to go now, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem for him. Gosh, with a thumb down like that, coming around, he told his mechanic something. The checkered flag for Steve Lampson. Kevin Windham with all the riders going down. Yes, he's looking at his rear tire. He's got a flat tire. Welcome to Southwick, Massachusetts as we get set to see the gate drop and get this one underway. It's been a great season so far. Steve Lampson, can he continue to dominate though? The long straightaway here at Southwick. Who will get the whole shot? Oh, look at number 42, Tony LaRussa. He's from Brockton, Massachusetts, his home track at number 20. The heat winner last year is down. Tim Ferry will start it up again in last place. LaRusso, Lusk, Raynard, all the good starts. Number 42, what a happy surprise that is for this youngster. Crowd's gonna love that. He got a good drive out of that berm heading up the hill. That's really important, that hill is so steep, all full of sand, you gotta get a good drive out of the corner. Look at Lamps in there, buried in the pack. Raynard takes O'Connor, moving into second place. Oh, is he on the move? He wasn't even out of the corner yet. He's still in the berm, reaching up for clearing his vision. So uh, that sand starts getting in your face, and it's kind of wet, so it sticks to your lenses. And as you start to gobble that up through the race, you run out of tearaways. And Lusk has moved into third now as we see LaRusso, number 42, out in front. Then it's Robbie Raynard and the Primal Honda in second place. And Team Suzuki's Ezra Lusk in third. Rainer to the inside on this very famous straightaway on the finish line. LaRusso going to the outside has the slight advantage. But here comes Rainer. Rainer to the inside on that long sweeping downhill. Pretty fast track for 125s. Real quick, especially through this top section. I mentioned this corner before that they're approaching is, like I said, about the longest left-hander. Oh, Rainer's, Rainer's down. down. Our leader, Robbie Rainer, went down. It looks like he's hurt. The bike's now trying to avoid it. Oh, John Dowd! He hooks the handlebar and goes flying. He's lucky he didn't get hurt. Look at this. He hits the handlebar. Lucky not to get his leg caught up in that. It threw him completely off the bike. And just before he came by, Scott Carter went by and clipped the bike and tore his radiator shroud loose. Ezra Lush now putting pressure on our leader, Tony LaRusso. Number 34. Nice, clean, wide-open pass. One wonders how Robbie Raynard is feeling right now. He has not re-entered the race. It looked like he had the slight injury. Steve Lampson now making his move. Nice clean move on Kim Ashkenazi. 
Steve Lampson, though, just uh, looking for the opportunity now to take second place away from Tuna LaRusso. LaRusso, though, with a good, consistent ride up to this point. And look who comes flying by Steve Lampson into second place. Great move. I always like that line Steve just took right there. He hit that jump by the tree and fly all the way to the outside. This battle is kind of funny, really. Look at them all. They've been the same like this the whole time. All four of them are like magnets just sticking to each other. Pit boards everywhere when they come to the mechanics area, and Craig's still the tail end of it. I have a feeling those Sheik is going to force some action here. Well, Sheik is the tough one, and so is Craig. Look oh. on the outside. Great move by Craig in very limited quarters. And look at that. Sheik got caught in that berm, didn't really get the line he wanted. It took him forever to get up the hill. So uh, there, that's what I had pointed out before. It looks like Wyndham now. Maybe he's starting to sneak up from behind. To the inside. Sheik getting by Brandis. Brandis going very wide. And there comes Wyndham cutting up and in. There's Wyndham's dad and his girlfriend anxiously looking on as Kevin trying to pick up some space on Chad Pedersen. Coming up that hill, you can see how deep those ruts get. Look at this, wide open down the downhill, hits a breaking bump, it's almost like a jump. These guys carrying a lot of speed into that corner. Question now is, can Lammy get close enough to pressure Lusk into a mistake? Well, that's what he's hoping for. Lusk going wide, I don't like when he goes wide like that. Oh, a little bobble too. Lampson powers bar to bar with him. Steve Lampson now is good in close quarters. Once again, Lusk going wide. The uphill before the final turn in that famous straightaway that's got all kinds of bumps and ruts. Checkered flag for Steve Lampson. And right on his back tire was Ezra Lusk. Moto number two is underway. Jeff Willow on the inside has Lusk. Look at Ezra Lusk on the outside. Comes banging in from the outside. But Chad Pedersen strong enough to kind of get through that hit. It's Willow out on top. Deegan is down. Number 25, the independent team Chaparral rider colliding with a privateer. More wrestling out in front. Back in the dust. Dowd is making a move up now to try to challenge. He's moving into third place. John Dowd certainly not pouting over his unfortunate first moto. No, he's tough, and he, he knows that's racing, and he kind of reminds me of Mario Andretti at the Indianapolis, you know? I mean, he's got the speed and the experience, he knows. I mean, this is a, a, the best track for him probably of the season to win on. They just can't get it done with bad luck, but here he's got a great opportunity. If he can win it, he can maybe forget about that first moto a little bit. To the inside, John Dowd moves into second place over Jeff Willow. Only Buddy Antonez. Out in front, keeps Dowd from his first win of the year. Willow in back of Dowd, Chad, Pe Chad Pedersen nips that post. He goes down. Right here, that back tire, just, well, he aimed a little bit too much at the inside. Man, he took a good blow to his shoulder on that big four oh. by four. And he is hurt and down on the track. The bike is in a difficult position to see, and therefore, Brian Deegan has no choice but to try to get over it. That was kind of weird. If I was Deegan right there, I would have just wheelied over the bike. That's kind of a, now they're on a, a really hard place to get going from again on the side of that hill. Plus, it's still a blind area. Here's the battle for first place. John Dowd, he wants to take that lead in front of some crazy jumping up and down family and friends at trackside. Here comes Dowd looking for his move out of the finish line straight away. John Dowd is passed into first place. Buddy Antonez hopes to hold on to second and come back. That was a great line, too. He came down the inside, but instead of just using the inside line, he rode the side of the bank. All within striking distance. Steve Lampson, though, is gearing in toward Ezra Lusk. Lusk gearing in toward Buddy Antonez. And Ezra Lusk, number 34, takes the lead away from Buddy Antonez. I was wondering which bike could move first. Lusk. Into the short corner, Lampson still undercuts him. I don't believe that. Lusk. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's just trying to do what he could to hold the right line, and uh, that's what I would have done. Use the inside right there, and Lampson just completely made up a line right there, and it worked perfect. And here's the checkered flag for John Dowd, our winner in Moto2. It's round seven of the AMA Motocross Series. Here's the Suzuki track map. As you can see from this complicated design, you can imagine how tough it would be to memorize this racetrack. 
The only change is in the upper right-hand corner. They took out a long loop section and brought the race a little closer to the fans. The start here is a long one, so these riders will gain quite a bit of speed before turn number one. Let's check out who gets off the gate first. Lampson, a real good start off the gate. To the first turn. Patterson, wide. Antonez to the inside. Dom, Ferry, Deegan, all the good starts, but it's number 21, Chad Patterson. He had the right angle coming off that first turn. If he'd have drifted a little wider, he'd have given it up to Antonez. But he's in control right now as they head for the ski jump. Last year's Skull Privateer of the Year. Oh, he feels pretty confident on the first jump. Dobb has been quick in this opening lap. He's already moved past a few guys, put himself in a position to challenge for the lead. Cutting to the inside, he gets the advantage to the outside and then puts the throttle down. Nice pass. Dobb trying to stay out of those deep ruts. You can imagine how your feet drag through there. You're going fourth gear through there in 125. It's important to pick the right line. Look at Ferry, real aggressive, getting by Buddy Antonin. That's what you got to do in the opening laps. And Lampson's not far from following suit. Ferry, here comes Lammy. Lammy getting by Antonin. So Antonin goes from third to fifth in a bat of an eyelash. Our leader is Chad Pedersen, number 19, James Dobb, and Tim Ferry, number 20, pulling up on the leader. They're starting to close the gap a little bit. I think Ferry really initiated it. He just uh, looks like somebody lit a fire under him. Now he's putting pressure on Dobb, which in turn is putting pressure on Pedersen now. Goes downhill, tight turns, and Ferry goes down. I was just going to say they look a little slick in that area. Dobb hounding Pedersen now as they go into the turn, and he gets good acceleration. James Dobb is our new leader. I kind of thought Pedersen would have taken a little bit longer to make a mistake, but he should have taken that inside line right there. As you can see, there's nothing wrong with it. Dobb rode it right around the inside, made an easy pass for the lead. So it's Sheik in fourth place, Antonez in fifth, and it's Ezra Luss getting onto the scene, number 34. Then Kevin Windham, after running off the track, trying to gain some time and cut inside of Ezra Luss, but gets locked out with the tires. It's a good idea. He could have maybe gotten a, maybe a couple of guys in there if they'd have creeped into that corner any slower. Lampson dominating the points lead. One second place right now. Pours it on. Chad Pedersen got the tire in front of him. Lammy goes down. Pedersen back on the track in second place. The checkered flag and James Dobb back in the victory circle once again. James Dobb, Chad Pedersen, Steve Lampson a third, Lusk in a fourth, and Tim Ferry comes back for a fifth. All right, that gate can drop at any moment right now, and they're off. Huffman, Tim Ferry, Steve Lampson, Mike Brown, and it's uh, Damon Huffman getting the whole shot. Boy, he's turning disappointment in the first moto into a grand start here in moto number two. Tim Ferry in second place, Steve Lampson in third. Another decent start for Lammy. There's our leader, Huffman, Lampson, and Fer Ferry goes after Lampson, almost put him down. That was a slick move by Ferry, and you got to do that in the early laps when guys are trying to settle into their pace. That's the time to make your move. Huffman doing a good job picking the right lines. Oh, Ferry tried to take the inside. Who told him to get aggressive? Well, I don't know. They got extra caffeine in his Gatorade or something, <laughs> but he, oh. Huffman's probably wondering what the heck. Look right here, Huffman's taken pretty much the inside line. There's no room. Ferry just thought he'd go in there and punt him out of the way. It would have worked if uh, it was maybe a different corner, but I don't know if that was the best place to try that move. And once again, he loses a lot of spot. Lampson's got the good angle on the inside. This matchup of Steve Lampson and Damon Huffman we might have expected more of at the beginning of the season, but of course the injuries cutting into Huffman. That's a shame too. Uh, you know, there's a few guys I thought could have really challenged uh, Steve Lampson, but everyone's had problems, and you know that's a real testament to Lampson keeping his cool and riding through all those problems. Tim Furry with some speed on the downhill. Who breaks last? Tim Furry has a nice edge. Mike Brown can't come out by cutting underneath. If Huffman should hold on to a fourth place finish, that would be his, that would tie his best finish in a moto this year, but John Dowd has other ideas. The battle for third place now in moto number two is on. It is really hot. Dowd.
fishtailing just a little bit. Couldn't take Brown to the inside. Tries the outside now. Good speed. Looks back as the angle. He's now in third place. Coming around for the final turns, Steve Lampson as he heads toward the checkered flag. The heel clicker. He's taking on a little Showtime stuff right there. His fifth overall victory of the season. One of the greatest traditions of motocross near New Berlin, New York, where legends have been enhanced and careers began their climb, especially in the 125 ranks. This track has not changed much over the years, David Bailey. Now, one of the neatest things on this racetrack is the start. As soon as you take off, you drop down in the valley, and then you come back up before the first corner. As you can see from the layout, it's got everything. Long straightaways, sweepers, sharp corners, some of the steepest hills, and everything here is natural. Okay, we're almost set to go as they start the rev here in Moto 1 for the 125s at Unadilla. It's Michael Craig, number 17, John Dowd, Larry Brooks, Tim Ferry, but look who's got the whole shot. Number one, Steve Lampson. He's taking nothing for granted, David. Not at all, and he's got those little hand protectors that Marty talked about on his handlebars, and uh, with a hole shot, he's probably not going to need them, as long as he can stay out there. <laughs> but hey, what's that? A little <laughs> shortcut. I'm not sure if that was a shortcut or a better line. It it's looked like, like the, it was less rough. The great escape, Steve McQueen jumping the fence there. He jumped the banners. <laughs> that was pretty slick. He could have gotten him hung up in his back tire, but he didn't lose any time by going wide, so I don't think that would be a problem for him. John Dowd in third place, followed by Team Suzuki's Tim Ferry, who's riding with a new aggressive style. Maybe he realizes he better do something before the end of the season is up. <laughs> Steve Lampson, our leader here in the opening moto, one, two, fives from Unadilla. We take a look at Mike Brown being hounded by Buddy Antonez. An off-camber turn below the uphill move. Very hard to get momentum, but Antonez now is moving into fifth spot. Makes the pass on Mike Brown. And Brown blew that berm at the bottom of the hill. Lost all his momentum on the 125. That's, that's going to kill you. You come into that corner, and you're, you're just saying, okay, now get through the corner fast. You're so over-anxious at times, you'll make that mistake. He went over the berm a little bit. That opened the door for Buddy. Kevin Windham, riding Unadilla for the first time, has to come back from that mid-pack start, and he's doing it in grand style. He's taking on Mike Brown and Damon Huffman. Oh, he almost took a very difficult line off the track. Here he's battling with Mike Brown as they go up the hill. He's got good power. Passes Brown. Next in his sights, number 10, Damon Huffman on the Kawasaki. And Brown did a pretty good job of trying to keep Wyndham from getting around him up that hill. He just moved over little by little, and Wyndham had the room to keep going. The track here is so wide, Wyndham using it all. Boy, and he's not letting off that throttle at all as he gets by Huffman. Wyndham has passed 14 riders in five laps. Michael Craig still in second place as Lampson is taken away with it. John Dowd, though, makes the inside move on. Oh, they contact, and Michael Craig kisses the dirt a little bit. A big battle right now for second place. It's Ferry on the team Suzuki, number 20, passing John Dowd, and he's got second place out of this corner. What a nice move, and he saw how hard he had to get on the brakes and make that corner. Out horsepowered him, and picked a little bit better line down that right-hand sweeper, and then coming into that sharp left, both brakes locked up. So Ferry's aggressive right now and moving forward. Here's Lammy trying to finish things up. Oh, the bike looks in great shape. Doesn't even look like it's been in a race as he takes the checkered flag. Moto win number nine. Casey Johnson finishing in 36th in the first moto. Having his problems today now. Whoa, they got a little false start there at the beginning. They were lucky they didn't even hung up. Kevin Windham, though, with a great hole shot start here in the second moto. That's Kevin out in front. Drifts all the way out to the banners. You can see they've taken the disc out there and churned up the racetrack, so that's all smooth. They're running through there wide open, but Windham right now, clear sailing, a lot different from the first moto. Windham coming around the mechanics area now. Jeez, look at the lead he's already got. Michelle worked into second, but already about 25, 30 yards back. Mike Brown, Buddy Antonez, number 22. And then Kratz, still holding in the top five. Oh, Michael Brandis goes for a ride. Unscheduled, of course. Equal distance between second, third, and fourth. And guess who's in fourth? And he is on the come, having a little trouble there with the berm on the on the tight turn. He tried to cut it with Steve Lampson, but he didn't lose any time on Pichon. 
He's got a long ways to go to catch up to Wyndham. He probably can't even see him. But if he finishes up in second here, that wouldn't be too bad of a day. And he'd still pick up the overall. So I think it's first things first. Get into second, see where uh, Wyndham is, and then decide if it's worth making that kind of a push. Remember, he went down here a couple years ago pretty hard. Corkscrewing around the trees now. Mikel Pichon in third, following Mike Brown. And Kevin Wyndham. Oh, there goes Pichon. Now it's a factory Honda versus a Honda of Troy souped up production. I think Lampson's going to have a little bit of an advantage. He's definitely got a lot more confidence. Rightly so. If I'd won that many motos, I'd be pretty confident too. <laughs> totally different from last year when Lampson, of course, the injury and had to fight back from a 60 point deficit to take the championship in the final moto. Nice, easy, clean pass of Mike Brown by Steve Lampson. Here comes John Dow to the inside. The passing of Damon Huffman. That Just barely caught that outside berm, David. <laughs> he didn't catch much of it, but he was determined to stay on the racetrack. Looked over to make sure he had that clean pass. Same place he got Craig in the first moto, but at least Huffman didn't go down in the process. Buddy Antonez, Tim Ferry, and then John Dow. That's a good threesome for a battle coming up here on the Unadilla track. Dow doing the same thing that uh, Rayner did, jumping over the crest of that hill. Makes the pass, it looks like. Sure did, made the pass on Tim Ferry. Good pass. Dowd and Antonez fighting it out. Antonez cannot hold on to the position, and John Dowd has moved up a notch. He keeps making passes on that inside. He's got two places on the racetrack where I notice he keeps making his passes, both on the inside. Catches the guy by surprise, runs it in a little deeper. By the time the guy gets into the corner, Dowd's already in the way. He has to just give it up. The checkers for Kevin Wyndham. Oh, good comeback effort for Kevin after a difficult first moto. Kevin Wyndham, Steve Lamps in the second place, Mike Brown all the way to third. John Dowd and Tim Ferry are top five. Hello, everybody. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Marty Reed from Kenworthy's Motocross Park in Troy, Ohio. And taking a look at the Suzuki track map, the track really hasn't changed at all since last year in terms of the layout, but they've added a few whoop de doo sections and some jumps that are a little bit different angle this year, and the starting line is all on fresh grass. Once they get out onto the dirt, shoot up, the soil is perfect. Perfect traction for these 125s. As we get set for moto number one of the 125s, and they're off. Oh, breaking from the gate beautifully is Steve Lampson. He'll be hard to catch with this great start. Steve Lampson gets the whole shot. Right there is Michael Craig. You'll notice number 17 and number 14, Robbie Raynard. Lampson, Raynard, and Michael Craig. You'll notice Michael Craig, number 17, in blue uniforms, uh, not in the traditional red and black of Honda of Troy. They use these blue uniforms for special occasions. And, of course, Honda of Troy just down the road. Beats. Oh, Raynard tripled where Lampson only doubled that little one. That's going to be a tricky section, depending on uh, whether you're in the lead, trying to decide whether you should go tight or wide. If you go wide the way Raynard and Craig did, you're able to triple that section coming in there, and it gives you a good run to that long section. And, uh, I think we'll see some passes there as the race continues. This is the race within the race for second place here in the early going, and Michael Craig gets cross rutted there a bit, and Robbie Raynard puts on the throttle. Oh, Craig just leaned a little bit too far to the inside, cut out of that berm, and lost all his speed. It looked like he smacked his knee on the handlebar, and that was all Nate Raynard needed. John Dowd, Tim Ferry, and Damon Huffman trying to pick up the slack between the leading pack. It looks to me like Huffman's really putting the pressure on these guys, starting to tighten the screws, and that's picking up the pace of this trio. And then Raynard's father talking about Robbie not feeling very good, not feeling 100%. Oh, good pass by Damon Huffman. He went to the outside, like you said, got the momentum to triple. Ferry doubled. That was an excellent line. Ferry went out there and had the run at it, but uh, he didn't go out wide enough. I think he was afraid Huffman was going to cut underneath him, and then he got passed anyway. Huffman in his third race back from injury. ACL injury cuts to the inside on Dowd, and he's now in fourth spot. Now it'll be interesting to see if he pulls away from these guys pretty quickly. He was able to uh, get around them pretty easily. He's got the confidence to go to the outside right oh, there. Challenged once again by John Dowd. Whoa, Kevin Windham 
inside, does a triple. I don't believe that. On 125, he doesn't even go to the outside. He just squared off Pedersen and still did the triple anyway with, a, with ease. So uh, some of the trickier sections are easier for Wyndham right now, and he's just slicing his way through the pack. Robbie Raynard and Michael Craig going at it once again, and Michael Craig takes over second place. Back and forth through there, it looked like to me that uh, Craig had tried to do all he could to block Raynard, and uh, they probably slowed each other down a little bit in the process, taking some pretty wild lines, but Craig's got a hold of it, and he's looking over his shoulder, making sure. But the battle here is for second place. Number 17, Michael Craig, and number 14, Robbie Raynard, with Damon Huffman now making it a three-way run. Huffman really starting to tighten the screws on these guys. He has been able to pass anybody he's caught up to so far today. We'll see if he can do it around both these guys. It seems like they kind of got in a battle amongst themselves and forgot about Lampson. And what's happened is uh, Huffman is moving about the same pace as Lampson's caught these guys. And now it's changed the complexion of the whole battle. Here comes Huffman to the inside, showing his expertise as he takes Michael Craig moving into third. 89 points in the lead coming into this race, trucking toward his second consecutive 125 national title. Takes the checkers here in moto number one. Robbie Raynard approaching the veteran Guy Cooper, who is running in his second race, but the veteran wisely pulls aside for this battle for second. Raynard holding on, Damon Huffman in third. Still the best finish of the year for Damon. Scotty Sheik uh, just recuperating from some minor injuries as we get set down for Moto2 right behind the bike of Damon Huffman. Our camera wisely got out of the way. The gate is dropped. Let's see who gets the whole shot this time around. In Moto number one, it was Steve Lampson. Huffman was battling Wyndham, and Lampson gets tied up in that little ruckus there in the first turn. Damon Huffman, number 10. 17 is Michael Craig, another outstanding start for him, and Chad Patterson, number 21. Wyndham, got a look at the lead. Looks like he's going to go for it right here. Oh, and the inside, Kevin Wyndham. Easily takes Damon Huffman. Take another look. Wyndham comes out of the inside right here, inside of Huffman. Takes so much finesse to get over that triple from there. Interesting battle here is the fact that Steve Lampson has now moved all the way up to seventh position behind Chad Pedersen. The more Lammy moves up, the better chance for another overall victory. He has to get into third position to capture another overall. Looks like Pedersen gave him a little break check right there and looks back over his shoulder. Like, Who's this guy that caught me so quick? And back behind these guys is Rayner. So. Lampson and Rayner going 1-2 in the first moto, having a battle from behind in the second moto. Steve Lampson in sixth place now, pursuing Tim Ferry. Lammy coming off his very first win at Unadilla. Six different riders have won motos this year. Pashone, Sheik, Dowd, Dobb, Wyndham, and of course Lampson. Is Lampson now in pursuit of Tim Ferry? Trying to get up to that third spot, and uh, Lampson makes a nice inside move. Ferry gave him the space, and Lammy took advantage of it. Michael Craig now. And an easy inside pass for Steve Lampson. Another look. Craig comes in on the inside. Can't stay in that berm. He hit it too abruptly uh, to try to follow it around, and Lampson had it timed perfectly. He was on the outside and rolled right into the inside line, took it away. It was an easy pass for him. You can see the intensity picked up a little bit now as he comes across at a slow pace for the checkered flag. Kevin Wyndham, our winner of Nomoto number two, followed by Huffman, Lampson, Mike Brown, and Michael Craig, the top five. A festive atmosphere from Millville, Minnesota. This is a fascinating track. All kinds of elements, David Bailey, as we take a look at the Suzuki track map. First of all, it's one of the longer starts with a very fast, sweeping right-hand first turn. And as they work their way towards the right of your screen, the roughest section on this track, the sand whoop section, and they work their way uphill and get into some of the harder pack sections before working their way back to the finish. We're set for Moto 1 now, the 125s to get the afternoon of racing underway. Little squirrely in the middle right there. Antonez on the inside, but he backs off. Michael Craig, number 17, will get the lead. Antonez, number 22. A great start, David. There's a lot of privateers up to this time. Look at Kevin Wyndham blazing around the outside. 
Looked like Antonez had the whole shot, but he backed off a little soon, and it really cost him in that fast first corner. And I think Wyndham has the pace, or he's, at least he's proven it in the second motos a lot of times this year, to be as fast or faster than Lampson, but until he can get around Craig right here, he won't have a chance to uh, see what Lampson's doing out there. And once again, we have to take under consideration that Wyndham has not seen or not ridden a lot on these tracks. This is another one that he's going to have to learn a little bit. Craig and Lamps and all the guys around him have ridden here before. They know where the hot lines are. Here comes Wyndham in a section that is very difficult. I love to watch this section. And Wyndham came in there the way you're supposed to. Uh, you got to go in there fast in order to maintain your momentum and stay on top of the bumps. However, that's the real key. You got to tell yourself, all right, I'm going to go in there here higher. And that section gets busy when you start going through there a lot faster. And if you make a mistake, you can go down. Ferry gunning for fourth. Mike Brown currently of Honda of Troy holding it down. Ferry goes in. Oh, a little rub action right there, but Ferry gets through it. As we've said on the past two telecasts, this guy has turned on the aggression. Here's John Dowd in pursuit of Buddy Antonez, the privateer number 22. Nice rhythm right there by Dowd. Use that little bump to hop onto that sort of like a little mini plateau there and keep flat to the section. As soon as you get dropped down into one of those holes and start that up and down motion, you lose all your forward momentum. Looking to get back into second in points in pursuit of Bunny Antonez. Antonez has not let people off the hook very easily, but gives just enough room in that corner. That's a good passing corner, we found out already. Oh, going down is Tracy Backman. the checkers for Steve Lapson, moto number one. Lamby, Craig will come in second with Kevin Windham in third, Tim Ferry a fourth, and a fine fifth for Mike Brown. And look at that rear tire on Lampson's bike. Almost looks like a paddle tire. Looks like it would tear up the street. The track here, about 80% sand, so they got a lot of space between the knobs. Okay, we are ready and we are off in moto number two. Let's see who will get the whole shot this time. And it looks like Robbie Raynard on the inside is Dowd bumps on the outside. Raynard number 14. And Dowdy is in second place. Looks like Chad Pedersen in third. That was scary for a moment there. Dowd and Pedersen getting together in like fourth gear. Going 50 miles an hour through that sweeper. Both of them stayed up. Remember Dowd last year here went down in the first moto uh, early in the start. Cost him big. Took out Emick too. As for Lusk, number 34, Kevin Windham, number 38. Two more riders back. We've got Steve Lampson. Lammy's made his way. Whoa! Tim Ferry has pulled off into the mechanics area and even threw the goggles to the fans. So that's a pretty good sign that it's over. Robbie Raynard is our leader with John Dowd in second place as we go back to see some of the heavy infighting in the pack. And Kevin Windham trying to get back up near the front in a battle with Ezra Lusk, number 34. That was close, too. He came in there and had to lock it up. You see his front tire just barely missed the rear tire of Lusk. If he'd have hit him, he'd have high-sided and gone down. Trying to get, show him a wheel and keep the pressure on him, though. That's how you force a mistake. Windham to the outside, and he's got the acceleration. He gets in front of Ezra Lusk to take the extra spot. Chad Pedersen is next in his sights there. You can see it in the bright green bike. That was uh, Chad Pedersen's mechanic saying, focus ahead. Don't worry about the riders behind you. He's only got Wyndham, Lampson, some of the big guns of this game. And they'll be breathing down his neck here pretty soon. Yeah, no, don't worry about that gun pointed at your head. Jeez. <laughs> the best riders in this class are breathing down his neck, but that's the best advice. Focus ahead. Look at that. Oh! Ezra Lusk toppling over. Looked like he might have brushed with Steve Lampson. Yeah, I think he came into that corner and just, uh, he should have stayed leaned in. He leaned up too straight, hit the back tire of Lampson high sided. So, you know, think about Pedersen out there. I mean, that could have happened to Lampson or anybody else. So there goes back to that advice. Focus ahead because you never know what's going to happen behind you. That was that section before where Pedersen was going way wide into that corner. A little smarter this time not to leave the door open because he's got the two fastest guys. Oh, what a cut inside, Steve Lampson and Kevin Windham going at it. What a battle. Lampson just saying, no, I'm not going to give you any room right here. Watch Lampson, he'll try to square this corner, and he gets this berm a little wrong. Gets real sideways, did a nice job of saving it. 
But he lost all his momentum. Look at Wyndham, comes down the outside. And I don't think it's a good idea for him to try to make a pass on Lampson right there on the outside. Lampson took him all the way to the tires, and Stanton saw the whole thing. He's radioing it back to the pit. It's a real battle right now. Steve Lampson and Chad Pedersen. Lampson, he makes it out in front of Chad. Robbie Rayner, just enough uh, momentum out of that corner to hold on to the lead against the rampaging John Dow. Down on the back for Yamaha. Seems like he would have a little bit of an advantage. Whoa. Oh, nice and close. Rayner showed some toughness there. Robbie Raynard looking for his very first moto victory. Here's Lampson and Dowd in the battle for second place. Dowdy still holding on to that second place. Oh, my goodness. Lampson trying everything, squaring him off everywhere, using a little different line. Trying to stay out of the roost for one thing. Keep his vision clear and not have to dodge that. That, that hurts. That sand coming at you, it's like getting sandblasted. Even a 125 is going to spit it out at you. Dowd uh, just in front of Lampson. If he can hold on, that'll save him some points anyway. Lammy can't clinch the crowd today. No, but if he puts together some good finishes uh, in the next round at Washougal, he will be able to wrap it up. And that'd be remarkable with, with a couple of rounds remaining. 100 points up for grabs. All he needs is 101. Robbie Rayner is so close to his finest moment of the motocross season. There's the checkered flag. Dowd right up her tails, Lampson as well. One of the closest finishes we've had all year. Hello everybody, Art Ekman along with David Bailey at one of the most beautiful motocross locations we have in this nation. Taking a look at the Suzuki point standings now, Lampson does have a 118 point lead. That'll take us all the way back to Marty Smith days as far as domination in the 125s. First of all, it's gonna be an uphill start with a pretty fast right hand turn. They've got a new loop. Uh, new section before they head up the hill into the back section and as they come back around to the finish line They've added a couple of switchbacks just to slow things down a little bit before they head into the whoop section Our 125 moto number one just about set to get underway from Washougal, Washington Deep in the Cascades and a good start good clean start Lampson he's got the whole shot with two pro circuit riders Pingree and Pedersen. Pedersen number 21 in second place. Power is also edging in there, 112. Lampson is our leader with Pedersen in second. Lampson into the whoops. Chad Pedersen, 21. Number 19 is James Dobb at number 112. Flowers. Here comes a roaring 34 and number 17. It's Ezra Lusk and Michael Craig on the move. There's down number seven and 38 is Wyndham. If you do have a close battle, though, on this Washougal track, like we're experiencing right here with Chad Pedersen and James Dobb, you have more options to pass on this track than you do a lot of others. Yeah, there's, it doesn't get that rough. You can see that they're able to take different lines everywhere. Dobb inside, outside, and uh, for the moment. Oh, Dobb taking over second place now. Chad Pedersen gave him just a little daylight. Chad Pedersen comes back with the challenge. Bar to bar, Chad Patterson inches out in front, retakes second place. Oh, what a great battle. There's a good battle between Michael Craig and Ezra Lusk for fourth place. So right now it's Patterson, Dobb, Lusk for the time being, and Michael Craig. Oh, a little bump and rubbing right there. No paint lost yet. Michael Craig, oh, he inches out in front of Ezra Lusk. A great battle. I don't know how long it can keep this up, but it's obvious that they've uh, picked up the pace. No wonder they caught the guys in front of them. Chad Pedersen, an important race uh, with no contract yet for next year. And right now, James Dobb retakes second place on Chad Pedersen. So it's Dobb, Pedersen, Craig, second, third, and fourth with Ezra Luss just sitting back. Dobb going wide and a little crease. Craig, though, can't get by. Craig's bike goes down. Number 34 on the chase of Chad Pedersen, number 21. It's a long uphill. Saps the horsepower out of these 125. On the inside, Lusk taking Chad Pedersen for third. Ezra glancing over his shoulder, making sure that uh, Pedersen's not going to come back to the inside of him. The big challenge now on Pedersen is from Michael Craig, number 17, who inches inside. He's got him with the block pass. Look at Wyndham, though. He's really on the throttle. 
Wyndham's definitely caught these guys quick, but he's watching all this bumping going on, and think about how much time he's made up. He's, he's still, I think, second place within, within his grasp, and doesn't want to let it all slip away by getting caught up in one of these battles and getting knocked down. What an amazing comeback that would be for number 38 if he can come all the way from the rear of the pack early in the race and capture a second place as he's taking on Chad Pedersen to the inside. Good clean pass by Kevin Windham. The young Yamaha rider is now moving up the ranks to challenge for third and fourth. Michael Craig on the outside, Ezra Lusk on the inside of the whoops, and Kevin Windham is on the trail of those two bikes. Anything can happen with those guys out in front, and it normally, whoa, it normally does, I was going to say, Ezra Lusk goes flying, looks back at Michael Craig saying, hey, this is the second time you've been down, why take me with you, I think, huh? But in second place, James Dobb, number 19, is getting some real feel now from Kevin Windham from behind, Michael Craig then, and Mike Brown in back of him. Windham putting the pressure on Dobb. Clean cut to the inside. We've seen some people go down in this corner not long ago, but that's a good clean pass by Kevin into second place. Well, I don't think there's any problem there. He's already thumbs up to the crowd. Pretty remarkable with five motos to go and wrap it up. In great contrast to last year where it went down to the final moto with Ryan Hughes. Laps in our winner, Kevin Windham all the way to second place. Craig holding on to third. Mike Brown in the top five as well. Let's go down to Davey. Congratulations on the good ride there. Yeah, thanks. I just uh, got out to a good start, and that's uh, what counts. Got out to a good start and just rode comfortable the whole race. Right. Were you doing the math in your head? Were you thinking about the championship? No, I'm trying not to. I mean, I wasn't too worried about it, but I knew that uh, I didn't know where Dowd was and how he had to finish. I knew I was probably pretty close to winning the championship, but uh, I just wanted to win the race, and that's why I wanted to do second moto, too, not, not really worry about that. But uh, if I did wrap it up, I'm stoked, you know, I'm glad. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks a lot. Set for Moto2. It's underway. Lampson gets a good point charge once again. He's got the whole shot. Michael Brandis of Team Chaparral is right there behind him. Our leader, Steve Lampson, number one. Michael Craig, 17, two and a half seconds behind. John Dowd is in third with Michael Brandis slipping to fourth. Tim Ferry, a good start for him, number 20. Kim Ashkenazi then, the former Australian champion. Number nine is Mike Brown and Wyndham. About 14 seconds back, is making a move on Brown. As Wyndham makes another charge on Mike Brown, cuts to the inside this time off the berm. What a move by Kevin Wyndham. That was fantastic. And this thread of the needle just barely got around Mike Brown. We're in moto number two. Steve Lampson, winner of moto number one, still has a good lead as we go back through the pack. In fourth place, it's Tim Ferry, number 20. After a miserable time of it, in the first moto where he couldn't pick up any points. And Ferry stumbles and lets uh, Robbie Raynard in front of him now as Kevin Windham comes into the action with Tim Ferry. Good oh. clean pass. And they get all oh, and Ferry goes down. Ferry trying to get back at him, lost his balance, and Windham lost a lot of time. Damon Huffman, uh, fourth place in the opener at Gainesville. And of course, then the circuit goes back to Supercross. Oh, Huffman slips out. Unfortunate now for Damon. He'll have to get back up in a hurry to get back into contention. Steve Lampson announcing that he will once again defend the 125 title. So the youngsters like Kevin Windham, who are trying to move up through the ranks, still have this man to contend with. Steve Lampson, the checkered flag, with John Dowd taking a second, Michael Craig a third, second overall. Raynard and Huffman rounding out the top five here in photo number two. Let's take a look at the Suzuki track map, David. Track here has been basically the same for a long time. The same start, a drag race into a sharp right, 180 degree corner. Then it leads into some supercross style sections before heading up into the woods. It's gonna be a lot of rocks out there today. These two guys battling it out for second place. Teammates on Team Yamaha, Kevin Windham and John Dowd in our first photo is underway. Lots of speed in that first straightaway. Number one, Steve Lamps in the hole shot on the red bike. There's Michael Craig, number 17, 22, Buddy Antonez. In second place is Craig Windham. Windham has now moved into the lead. Windham wasting no time. Lamps is coming right back. They bump in the corner. Good bar-to-bar -bar action here at the beginning. 
Hoffman in about fourth position as Lampson tries to cut inside, but good speed by Kevin Windham as they make the jump clean. Hoffman looking for his spot now. He's keeping the pressure on. That's the best thing you can do with Craig. I've seen Craig look around a lot before. He's already starting to do it here. Here's Huffman to the inside. Can he hold on? Yes, he does on the off camper. Gets good power up the hill. Huffman moving into third. Brown with a lot of potential and just has had some bad breaks, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. It's difficult. Just like Huffman, you have a lot of injuries and... Uh, yeah, you know, it's hard to build up any confidence when you're like that. You know, these guys, one thing you can't see when they're out there is when they have arm pump. You hear, hear him say it all the time. Once that happens, you can barely ride. You can't use the clutch. You can barely work the throttle. And very difficult to tell if a rider has it. But one, uh, one thing that's for sure is that the less time you can spend out there in a race situation healthy, the more problems you're going to have with it. Oh, a great shot of the roost not long ago. Look at the roost coming up. Our camera got a few stones in it, I think, there as Robbie Raynard is now pulling up, and John Dowd gets in front of Mike Brown. So a nice move on the corner. It's Pedro Gonzalez, John Dowd, Mike Brown, and then Robbie Raynard. Here's John Dowd making a concerted effort to the outside. Pedro, though, on the left-hand turn, got the inside break. Dowdy not letting off, though. Well, now he settles back in behind Pedro and tries the inside line. David, what would you do in a situation like this? I'd scream and yell at him, get out of the way! <laughs> uh, you hear guys yelling at times, and it yeah. looks like he's going to finally get him right there. But boy, he sure had to work hard. And look how much energy he had to use working inside and outside. Not necessarily the best line, but he had to muscle his way around. Now you can see already he's starting to get a little bit of a cushion. Probably he'll start to pull away a little bit right now, and he'll need to because there's that whole pack chasing him. Taking it nice and easy now as he circles on the final lap, points out there to the fans. Acknowledge him. Let's see if he goes another heel clicker before this final lap is over with. I know the fans are waving their hats and anticipating it. The finish line jump isn't the uh, biggest jump of all, but it's probably the happiest right now for Kevin Wyndham as can he do it? Yeah, he had enough room to click those heels. The defending champion Steve Lampson, who swept both motos here last year for his fifth overall of the season. He has won nine of 11 overalls coming into today's race, placing second in moto one. His hopes are to cap things off right here in moto number two. And Lammy with another good start. Ezra Luskin Brown also with a good start. Number 21, Chad Pedersen on the outside. Number nine is Brown. 17 is Michael Craig. Give the whole shot to Craig. Wyndham gets his move into second place on Brown. It's been a popular place for him to get around people. Just carries his momentum wide all the way around that sweeper up top. Before he heads down the hill, he's back to the inside again. Nice move. Oh, Steve Lampson is off the course. He was having a bumping good time with Brown there for a moment. But Lammy up and running once again. Craig with a second at Washougal. Went down twice in moto one, still got up for a third place finish in that moto. And the two thirds that day added up to second overall. So Michael's been very competitive so far, but it's obvious that he is concerned about number 38, the young phenom of Team Yamaha. I would be going as fast as he can. He's trying to take the best line everywhere, and Wyndham's right there, won't let him go. That makes you nervous. Oh, the inside move once again. That's his favorite passing area. Kevin Windham now. Michael Craig, who's proved very quick lately. Craig coming down that hill a little bit slower than he's been. These guys starting to catch up. Dowd coming down the downhill on the outside. Carried oh. all that speed into the corner. Good clean move by John Dowd to get by Mike Brown. He knows mechanics pretty stoked. <laughs> They're right across the valley. He can see that pass. Actually, this is Dowd's first year of the 125s. He was second in the 250s here last year with a 2-3. Takes to the inside, and yes, he's got second place on Michael Craig. We might add at this point in time that Mikel Pichon is still out with the chronic fatigue syndrome. 
that uh, virus that he's got and Tim Ferry out with an injury in this 125 day as Damon Huffman now in danger of losing his spot to the defending champion Steve Lampson. Lampson keeping the pressure on. Good hard move into that corner. There's nothing uh, Huffman could do about that. Oh, it's going to be a proud moment for this young man. Oh, even for team manager Keith McGurdy doing a headstand. I don't know if Kevin saw who it was when he went by. I don't know if he could recognize him in that form. <laughs> but Kevin Wyndham takes the checkered flag for the second time today. It's the final outdoor national of the year at Steel City, Delmont, Pennsylvania. One of the few tracks a fan can see almost the entire challenge. Well, from the looks of it, it looks like a Malibu Grand Prix course art. <laughs> Pretty confusing, a lot of elevation changes. This track is known for its huge jump, so if Lampson or Wyndham can get out front today, we'll see some heel clicking. Moto number one, the 125s, ready to get underway now, and they're off. Steve Lampson, another great start. Michael Craig getting a good shot, too. There's Lampson, number one. Craig, 17. What a pack. And you see Dowd and Wyndham right there together on the left of your screen. There's good bumping of teammates right there for the advantage. But Craig clearly taking second place as Wyndham now moves into third. What a start by Lampson. It looked like he got a pretty good roll at the gate. He tried to anticipate it. It worked perfect. Had a huge lead. Looked like he was riding a 250 yard. With this order of fast riders out front, look for some great competition in this race as we head to the helicopter shot. You can see how there how much air they're getting, and it looks like they're getting that much air from clear up here. You can imagine what it looks like from ground level. Michael Craig and Kevin Windham battling it out for second place right now as Kevin Windham putting the pressure on the Honda of Troy rider. Steve Lampson not pulling away from these two guys. Everybody's fast. There's Kevin Windham to the inside. Well, they really haven't had it like this out front all alone early in the race locked in a battle where they're both riding well and Lampson doesn't have the pressure Wyndham really doesn't have much second the points is uh it's important all oh Wyndham with a smooth move early can Lammy come back Kevin Wyndham with a surprise shocking move early in this race here's Lampson he retakes the lead oh my goodness what a battle early uh-oh, Ricky Carmichael, Casey Johnson tangling in turn one. So Ricky Carmichael gets his first initiation in the big time. Yeah, welcome to professional racing. It, that happens. I remember having a tough time just qualifying for my first national. I'm sure Ricky will do fine. Ricky looked really impressive in the practice of the qualifying rounds, but he's starting from way back now. As Kevin Windham retakes the lead. Back and forth we go, bar to bar, tire to tire. Watch Lampson here, his back tire. Gets on the gas a little earlier, the back wheel slips over the berm. Wyndham was uh, pretty smart there not to follow, squared that corner, worked out perfect for him. So now, it's a little gift from Lampson, and it wouldn't have been that easy to get around him, I don't think, but Lampson made the mistake, opened the door. Here's the closest battle uh, right now on the track, and that's for third place. Michael Craig is getting the pressure now from Damon Huffman. Usually Craig starts looking around quite a bit. He hasn't done that today yet. Huffman's definitely put the pressure on, and anytime somebody catches you like that, it just seems inevitable they're going to get around. It's a matter of where. Took a, a couple of races for Damon after the injury to get back into the flow of things in the Outdoor National. Damon trying the outside. Michael Craig shutting him off, protecting his line. Then Damon Huffman at Troy, Ohio, took a third place overall with a 3-2, and things were looking rosy. Then he got into bike problems, ignition problems, and that set him down for a couple of races. Came back in the last race with a fourth place overall. He's holding off Damon Huffman now, but Huffman comes to the inside. Little touch there, the tires. These guys get close. You know, you see guys banging together. You'll see him. It's like Huffman's going to have that inside line. He just positioned himself perfect for that one. Great move. You'll see these guys touch at times. And uh, it looks scary, but they're going the same speed, so it's just like bumping next to each other on the starting line. It really is, doesn't hurt anything. These guys have that much confidence. Yeah. 
Kevin Windham wheelies to his third consecutive moto victory here with the 125s. Right behind Windham, of course, in case he made a mistake, was Steve Lampson, Damon Huffman, a very credible but lonely third place finish. Looks like Windham now, because he won that first moto, he gets first pick to the gate. He elected to go to the far inside spot. That's where Lampson got that incredible jump in the first moto. See if it makes a difference this time. It doesn't seem to matter as much to Wyndham as long as he gets a good clean start. Not I'd, to get the whole shot. I'd take off and make a right. <laughs> <laughs> the only chance, look at Lampson again. Lampson again gets the whole shot in good position. Huffman number 10, Pedersen 21, and Wyndham. Very good position for Kevin Wyndham as they go into turn two, which is always a bottleneck. Well, it's an off camber and it's tight. So you got guys coming out of the first corner going and then coming into this from the far outside, the, the far left. And, no room for everybody. Buddy Antonez getting hung up there. Our leader once again out of the hole shot is Steve Lampson. Oh, this is a great battle once again. Kevin Windham now looking for that opportunity to get around Steve Lampson. Lampson just fast enough to take that inside line away from him. Just fast enough, or his bike's just fast enough. I'm not sure which. A little bit of both. And Kevin, you watch him. He's working on Lampson too. He'll go into the corner a little wide and carry his momentum, cut back to the inside. He's keeping Steve guessing. And uh, that's, that's the best plan when you're back there and putting pressure on somebody. So quite possibly Wyndham will find a new area to try to get by Steve Lampson here to take the lead. Right now he certainly has the pressure on going to the outside on the off camera but holding his own coming back on the inside trail. Now this title may be decided. It's not going to be quite like what we're coming up with in the 250 class but it sure is a great battle. A super one for another record crowd. On the sweeping right turn, Kevin Windham puts the throttle down, and Kevin Windham takes over the lead. We're just about the halfway point of the race. That was a pretty demoralizing pass right around him on the outside. Kevin Windham, though, has learned so much this year. I'm not, uh, I'm not so sure that last year might have been good for him, even though there was injuries and illness involved. It forced him to realize this is difficult. I think he has a little bit more respect for what he's able to achieve right now. A checkered flag for Kevin Windham. That's mechanical right there. You can see him trying to work the throttle. Takes the checkered flag. Hezbollah goes spinning in the air. It is a relief to win the championship for one and then uh, just go out there and have fun. John Dowd, though, makes the inside move on. Oh, they contact. And it looks like Robbie Raynard on the inside is down. Bumps on the outside. Raynard number 14. No, no, I just give it everything I got. Um, I have nothing left. A salute to the crowd. You can bet Scott Sheik is one happy man. Dowd with a real quick turn. Goes into second place. And here comes Lampson again. Right back in Wyndham. Retaking the lead. Uh, it's not disappointment. I'm playing out pissed off right now. Martin David, there's a lot of interesting things. It might be Ricky Carmichael. We'll see how he turns. See how he does. Art David. Okay. And five, four, three.